Hey, what's up, guys? This new Royal Recruits deck has revolutionized the way to play Clash Royale. The ranked 16 player in the world is spamming through top ladder players' defenses with this deck. It's turned the game into 100% no skill spam. By using Little Prince or Mother Witch to bait out the opponent's poison or fireball, you can stack up elixir collectors. And then when you get the evolved one, when you're up elixir from elixir collector, that's where the game starts to become fun. Relentless Royal Recruits that are charging on both sides when your opponent's down elixir, they're gonna be put down. Cause chances are they're gonna drop their building and have no counter to wall breakers. Or drop distractions to delay your rushing Royal Recruits that the Mother Witch will use to turn into a powerful piggy push. You've got goblins and fishermen to stop miners from digging on your elixir collector, and as long as you don't cycle Little Prince at the start, you're gonna be fine against most air decks, because they'll just get overwhelmed by your immense amount of ground spam, while the Little Prince completely cleans up on defense. I actually played this deck for my first run of the 20 win challenge. You can check that out in the pinned comment if you want to see more gameplay. It's time to speed up our spam with rushing Royal Recruits to assert dominance as fast as we can. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you never miss out on any of the daily videos. Lots of love to everyone that's supporting the channel with creator code SIRTAG. We've got a game against Boss who is around a top 200 player. I'm gonna go for Goblins at the River just to cycle to our Elixir Collector or our Recruits and see what this guy's cooking. Okay, so Firecracker is not a card that I love to see. However, we can activate King Tower with that. Jeez, dude, chill. Calm down with the E-Barb spam. So we do activate King Tower here with the Firecracker. And we defend against the Barbarians with a really nice Little Prince ability. After the defense of nerf to the Little Prince, it doesn't work as well against Wing Conditions, but it's still pretty good against Bridge Ban. Like, if you're trying to knock back a Golem a mile like you were able to before, it's not going to work out quite as well. Oh, jeez. It's going to have E-Barbs with an Inferno Dragon. <laughs> I'm so confused at what we're playing into, but... You know, I'm here for it. I, I'm totally fine playing against a Mega Knight Inferno Dragon Firecracker deck with E-Barbs. This is actually a really good matchup for us if we can get Elixir Collector down. Can we perform Ultimate Greed status right now? I think I can. I'm going to go Elixir Collector when the Mega Knight is rushing at me. And I feel like I can defend this if I go for a Fisherman at the right point. It yoinks the Mega Knight. And then we can Fireball on top of all the other stuff on the other side. Generally, this is not going to be great if we don't pull the Mega Knight. But we should be able to eventually pull the Mega Knight. So... Not the worst thing in the world. It's also not the best thing. Wait, he went for a zap. My man's just spending an uncomfortable amount of elixir out here. He's not even going to splash onto that. Both the wall breakers should connect to the tower. We're getting all the damage back, bro. That's totally fine for me. You know, we can go goblins here and then go for another elixir collector. <laughs> I am a massive memer at this point, guys. I shouldn't do it, but I'm doing it anyway. I'm doing it live. We go Little Prince. We're going to click the ability on the uh, E Barbs, and we should be able to kill the Little Prince alive. Unless he fireballs at the best point possible. Oh, we don't keep the Little Prince alive. Dang, I didn't get enough Elixir. It is what it is. It's not that bad. We've got Fireball for the Royal Hogs on the left-hand side. I totally thought we would replenish the Elixir with two Elixir Collectors on the field. But then I forgot it wasn't double Elixir. Okay, you know what? He doesn't have Fireball, so we can Mother Witch on this. We can convert his pigs to our team. And then we can start to go for Wallbreaker Spam on both sides. You know the cool thing? We can just drop it on one side now because he ended up dropping his Mega Knight. Wait, you know the other thing? We can go and pull the Mega Knight with the Fisherman and then delete it with the Little Prince. And then have the Wallbreakers take the left-hand side. What? He's got Mirror Mega Knight? <laughs> what am I playing into? How is the Mega Knight getting deleted by recruits? What the heck just happened? My man got pummeled. He's in some serious trouble out here. We got the Little Prince on the tower. We can click the ability anytime we want. It's not going to lock directly on the tower because its distance got a little bit removed. But, you know, it's good. It, it did get enough damage that we needed. Then we're able to Fireball on the Firecracker. All we have to do is defend this and we win the game. With Goblins and Mother Witch, we got it covered with the King Tower activation. Oh wait, he went for a zap. This is a little bit more sketchy, but we still walk with a dub. And if he went for a Firecracker of the River, it would get precluded by pigs. It would lock onto the pigs that were body blocking him. His own pigs that turned to our team sealed our opponent's fate. A little bit ridiculous that we played against a mere Mega Knight player that was around top 200 in the world, but let's just keep jumping up the ranks. And we've left our way up the leaderboard to rank 10-10 in the world. So this guy's got Electro Wizard in the banner. I want to see if he's going to be playing that card because there's literally nothing for him to reset besides a Fisherman. I guess that's a lie. He could reset the charge of the Royal Recruits, which is not necessarily something that people would typically do. Also, he is down so much Elixir right now. Hog Rider activating King Tower. Guards are ignored. He had to go encounter the Wall Breaker on the right. Like, this is bad for him. It's awesome that we have an Elixir Collector on the field. Oh! Wow. He threaded the needle with that lightning. He hit an Elixir Collector, and he snagged a Fisherman. Genuinely did not expect that to happen, and he had to wait for the Fisherman to walk near the Elixir Collector after activating King Tower. So he had to pre-plan that for a while. Very smart, sir. 
Can I go for a Mother Witch here? We should be able to go and convert that to our team real quick with two taps. Oh, wow, three. Mother Witch, I underestimated your weakness. You know what? We should be able to pull the Mega Knight near us as well. I want to go for Wall Breakers first, and then I want to go in for a Fisherman afterward and just pull the Mega Knight as far away from us and have all three towers engaged here. As nice as that is, we still have to go encounter his Mini P.E.K.K.A. and his Hog Rider. I believe that Goblin should be able to fully cover it, though. Can we snag the Hog Rider off of our tower, too? Nice! <laughs> Why does everyone have Mega Knight when we switch to recruits? Clash your out, what are you doing out here? Trying to make us uh, get a little bit panicked? I don't know. I, I feel like I'm chill. I feel like we're in a good spot. We can go for the Royal Recruits right now. If he clicks the ability, it would be dumb. No one clicks the ability until they see what they're playing against. Used to be really strong, but now it's just not near as good as it was. So I want to go in for a Fireball, possibly, if he has the Firecracker Evolution. Otherwise, we're just going to relax a bit. Maybe get some good trades with our Mother Witch on top of the Mini P.E.K.K.A. And then go for Wall Breakers on the other side if we want to. I don't have to do anything, though. I think I'm going to split Wall Breakers. I think that's just intrinsically better. Being able to force out Elixir on both sides just seems like a better trade. Let me go with Little Prince on his Little Prince and win that interaction. Then go for an Elixir Collector in the back. Our Little Prince started attacking first. Oh, he does have Electro Wizard. Wait, what happened? How did that happen? I'm so confused. I am not happy with how that happened. I thought my Little Prince would win. Oh, his Little Prince attacked first, so it got the attack speed first, and it ramps up its attack over time. I forgot about that. So it doesn't matter if your Little Prince was attacking first, if their Little Prince has been attacking for a while, because the attack speed of theirs is much faster. I had to understand what was going on. All right, we got to go and drop the ability so that the Mega Knight gets knocked back. Hopefully. Oh, yes, sir. I was playing right there. I did not know if that was going to work. It was so scary. I was looking at the Mega and I was like, yo, if you jump on me, I don't have enough elixir for the ability. I am toast. And a fireball here. Uh, I didn't hit anything. Even though the firecracker wanted to walk into that, his little prince got yeeted away. Sheesh. All right. Well, everything's dead. What is happening in this game? Why is this game so dynamic? Dang, the wall breakers are going to both explode on the tower. Then we can go in for recruits again on the left. And then we can go for goblins here. He has no way of stopping this because he can't Mega Knight. If he Mega Knights on one side, then he loses the other tower. That's the benefit of this deck. You overwhelm Mega Knight players because they don't have an option of dropping the Mega Knight. And even though he dropped the Mega Knight, he still lost his tower on that side. <laughs> My man's yawning. He needs to go to sleep just like his towers. My man from the Anti-Clan did not have a plan or an antidote to stop our spam. After pummeling another Mega Knight player, we push further up the ranks to 912 in the world. What's up, Midnight? This guy finished 209 in the world. Let's go. Let's get higher and higher ranks out here. We go for Little Prince in the back, and the guy is not spamming us right now. I really want to get to that Elixir Collector. Okay, so Electro Wizard makes me feel like we might be playing against a P.E.K.K.A. deck, which allows me to go for Recruits right now at the river and to play very aggressive, because if we win the bridge battle, he's going to have to deal with the Recruits on the right-hand side, and he's lightning in on the Little Prince. He is in a horrible position right now, because obviously the Wall Breaker is going to connect to the right-hand side. Then he's going to lose his Electro Wizard to the point that I can ignore it. The Archers, they're not evolved, so I don't even have to worry about them. And all this elixir that's coming at me is something that I don't have to respond to. He doesn't even have a bandit to go and support the archers, so they're just negligible. If he went in for a bandit or a battle ram or a ram rider in front of that, we would just kind of activate King Tower with win conditions because we got Fisherman in cycle. If he decided to spam really aggressively with cards like Pekka, it would just get distracted by goblins. There really wasn't a winning play for him to do there. So he was stuck in a horrible position just because our deck is that annoying. I'm going to go for wall breakers, and then I can go in for recruits as soon as I want. If I just drop them at the river and they're evolved... I don't know if he defends this. I don't know if he can. I don't think it's possible. <laughs> he's going to go in for a Mega Knight or a P.E.K.K.A. or something, right? Oh, he's got P.E.K.K.A. Yeah, he's just absolutely deleted right now. We have a super sinister deck. P.E.K.K.A. is going to die. Recruits on the right-hand side charge. We were up Elixir. He's going to go in for a Bandit, and that was a beautiful Bandit. That was super smart, but I mean, I'm complimenting my opponent's plays while he loses a tower. Isn't that a little bit sad? You guys recognize how unfortunate this is for our opponent. With a minute and 30 seconds left, he played well. He's a top 200 player. And there was literally nothing he could do but lose the game. A few dominances asserted later. Wait, can we three crown this dude right quick? We're gonna go Little Prince, Wall Breakers, and drop everything. I just dropped a fireball in the corner by accident. I swear I didn't mean to BM him. I think if I dropped a fireball on the three crown, I might have three crowned him. So, you know what? 
I felt like a nice person. I didn't feel like three crowning you after hard countering you. We're just gonna chalk it up to saying that we didn't wanna punish our opponent to the maximum degree. And our rank continues to rise at 487 in the world. Yo, this guy's got the sword and the banner and we are ready to go and chop down his towers. Black's in the 20 win emote. All right, dude, I see you. We're gonna go for Wallbreaker's first play and then we can go in for our recruits in the back if we want. But generally for us, Best strategy for us is to go for a Little Prince, try to force out our opponent's poison, and then we can go for an Elixir Collector in the back afterward. If he just wants to go Little Prince first, Little Prince, that's fine. His Little Prince ability doesn't extend far enough to kill mine, so totally okay just chilling there and letting that happen. He's going to have Miner. We're going to catch it with Goblins. Otherwise, we're going to let everything roll. Ooh, he might have a Balloon deck. Yeah, I kind of felt like that was going to be a possibility. As soon as we saw like the Ice Golem there, it just smelt like a Balloon deck. Anyway, we're going to get a lot of piggy value with uh, one of them tanking. And then we can get another one from the balloon, but still want to get more. We do have recruits flowing through soon, right? Let's let's go for the recruits at the river. Since we got a fisherman and we also end up having the mother witch, we got to get maximum utility out of these pigs. And we aren't getting much out of the pigs, but the fisherman's going to yoink itself onto the tower. And that's good. I mean, I said yoink instead of yeet. I don't know, guys. <laughs> I think the pigs influenced me right now. They're influencing my vocabulary. So definitely want to go Little Prince on Little Prince. And then we can go Goblins a lot lower because he's going to click the ability. And we knew that was going to happen, so we had to finish off the Guardian. His Little Prince should walk into ours, and that's going to be fine for us. We do win that interaction, so it's our Little Prince didn't get reset. It was already attacking, so it was just going to continue to attack. I don't want to click the ability randomly. It doesn't necessarily give that much value anymore. It used to, and then it stopped giving value when it can get countered by like cheap investments like an Ice Golem or something, if our opponent decided to do that. So we want to go and catch the Miner if we can. That'd be cool. That didn't happen, so we're going to have to go for Wall Breakers. Oh, we did catch it! He snowballed, but he didn't knock the fisherman away. <laughs> fisherman out here weathering the storm. That's beautiful. So this is probably one of the worst matchups for us just because there is a balloon and we don't really have a good answer for it besides our Little Prince and our Mother Witch. We got two anti-air answers and that's it. If we set up our recruits in the back, we might be able to set up a stellar attack. We can go in for our Little Prince here. It's not going to go and snipe the bomb tower, unfortunately, but what we can do is we can fire a ball on top of his Little Prince and his bomb tower, maybe mess him up. We'll have to wait and see if that works out. Yeah, we bopped the Little Prince really quick. Archers are obnoxious, though. We're going to have to cycle the Mother Witch on the right-hand side since that's where he's probably going to go in. Got Evo Archers on the field, so I feel like he's bound to go in for Balloon eventually. He's going in for the Balloon. We should be fine here, actually. The Balloon is getting targeted first by the tower, so it's not going to take out our entire tower to go in for a Little Prince or something. So we we'll try to get to that Little Prince as fast as I possibly can. Maybe we can lock onto the Balloon and have it not hit our tower. Nice. Wallbreaker's coming through on the left. That's beautiful. We're going to make a prediction. Go in for the ability. Try to get some extra value. I need some more value. Mother Witch coming through as well. We could Fireball on the Balloon. I think if we Fireball, the Archers don't take it. Maybe I'm wrong. Ah, the Balloon's going to get a shot. He's going to go for a Snowball, so we have to keep going through with all of our other stuff towards the other tower. This game is going to be ridiculously close. If I get Wallbreakers on the tower with the Fisherman and the Goblins, he doesn't have Barbarrel. I don't think he's going to be able to stop the Wallbreakers. We're not going to be able to get the Three Crown, are we? Man, this game is really coming down to the wire. We gotta go Mother Witch here. We gotta go in for a Fisherman. We gotta get a couple Piggies, and then maybe the Fisherman is gonna go and take the targeting, so then we can go in for Goblins afterward. Wait, we went in and pulled the... What is happening right now? This is so weird. I think we can go in for the ability with the Little Prince, and then go in for Wallbreakers. If the Wallbreakers connect to the tower, we will 3-crown. He doesn't have Bomb Tower nearby. I just need that one Wallbreaker, and it's so close! Let's go, baby! Destroying a 20-win player with a Balloon Cycle deck when our only two answers are a Little Prince that got nerfed and a Mother Witch. This guy was not so happy. Even though he's a 20-win player, he got absolutely shredded. In addition to being a 20-win player, this guy finished 448 in the world at over 3,100 medals. And after popping that Balloon Hard Counter, we've popped up to 558 in the world. And we got a game against another Top Ladder Warrior. So, Knight Graveyard, is that what he's playing? He's probably going to have a, some sort of Graveyard deck if he's got Graveyard in his name. So, I am going to go for our Elixir Collector in the middle, just because I'm scared of him Graveyarding if we drop it in the back. Just because of the name, I am conditioned to do that. Oh, it's Giant Graveyard. we got to go for a Fisherman here, and then it's going to be hard for us to defend, but maybe we can get a Mother Witch down on the Skeletons. We're pulling an Archer by accident, so this is not going as well as we wanted. But, wait, is that going towards the Elixir Collector? Giant, run away from the Elixir Collector, bruh. Don't do that to me. It got two shots of the Elixir Collector. Oh my gosh. Totally tragic start for us. But I believe in miracles and that we can bounce back. I'm going to click the ability of Little Prince. Knock back the bullet. Maybe we can stun it so it doesn't get a shot. It only got one shot there. Let's go Wall Breakers. After he arrows and then fireballs on top of the goblins. I don't think either of these connect. Maybe one of them. That was trash. 
I fireballed and wasted four elixir for one wallbreaker shot on a tower that was full HP. Safe to say things are not going well in this game, guys. I didn't even get to cycle my recruits once, so I don't even have the evolution in cycle soon. Oh man, this sucks. I mean, if we go elixir collector right now and he spams in the right hand side, I at least have a mother witch, so there is that. He's going left. We're good. We're chilling. We're set up for success. If he spams into this, we should be able to defend. We've got fishermen. We've got recruits. We've got things happening out here. We're going to stack most of the recruits in the left. And then we can go in for a fisherman to go and pull the giant. And this time, we're not going to pull archers, okay? We're straight up just going to pull the giant. I promise it's going to work out. It's calculated out here. It's calculated perfection. Notice how the giant's going in the other side? That's what we wanted to have happen last time, okay? I might have messed it up a little bit. Just a little bit. We're going to go in for a mother witch on top of whatever bait cards he drops. He's probably dropping gobs. And there they are. Free piggies for us. Beautiful sight to see. We can go in for a little prince as well. And then we can fireball on his little prince. If he drops anything nearby, that'd be awesome. I was hoping he'd drop archers too. I don't know what I was expecting, but we might be able to snag the tower. Yo, mother witch putting in work. Okay. All right. I see you. Let's go in for the little prince ability since the little prince should not get targeted anymore. Since we can just have the little prince go off to the side away from the bowler. Now we can go in for like wall breakers, fishermen, goblins. Because we got recruits counter pushing. Might as well. I think if we just spam everything in the middle when we're up elixir, it's going to work out well. Also, this guy is like rank 400 in the world right now, and he's got a level 13 Little Prince that we can obliterate with a fireball. So if you didn't know, Little Prince gets yeeted out of the game if you got a fireball, and it's like one card level higher. Wait, we can click the ability of our Little Prince, and it might dash onto the three crown right now. If we can delete the boar and we go wall breakers, we might be able to three crown a giant graveyard player. He's missing the snowball, and I think he's missed his chance to defend. This is the end, my friend. GG and well played. Wow. <laughs> it's nice getting redemption against Knight Graveyard, especially since I lost against Giant Graveyard when I went 19 and 3 in the 20 win challenge for my first attempt on stream. And after that win, we've quickly climbed up to 329 in the world. You know what DK stands for? Drift King. Like if you enjoyed, check out the pinned comment for more gameplay from the 20 win challenge with this deck. Subscribe for more daily videos and have an amazing rest of your day.